back to the Plunder Den in our first paint tutorial video. So in today's video, we're going to cover the painting of this temple. So uh, originally I was going to do it in one single video, but there's far too much information to cover here. So I'm going to do it in three parts. Uh, one video, I'm going to cover the painting of it. Uh, the second, I'm going to cover uh, the washes that I added onto it to give it an aged look. And then all this uh, plant life in a third video. So uh, this is part one. We're going to cover the paint. Uh, so let's get down to the table and get started. Okay, so this is pretty much how I start all my terrain pieces. I start with my multi-surface uh, black uh, folk art paint, craft paint. Um, the reason I like uh, folk art paint um, is it hardens when it dries. That's the main purpose. It's a very durable paint. Uh, it's meant for crafting, um, so it, it really is a good quality paint. Um, there's a lot of different techniques out there. I know that uh, some people... Uh, um, use Mod Podge and all sorts of other things, which is also very excellent. It does a good job of hardening as well and protects your, your foam um, for deteriorating over time. Um, but I find that uh, when I paint uh, my terrain, I do a lot of uh, multiple layers of uh, paint. Um, so <clears throat> it's just multiple layers of craft paint. And when it all hardens, uh, it leaves quite a, a protective coating on the entire entire piece. Um, so right here, right now, I'm just uh, kind of covering the entire piece in black. Um, so uh, just uh, using a smaller, longer brush. Uh, I like to use this kind of brush to uh, so I'm able to get into all the crevices and cracks uh, and uh, get as much of it uh, painted as possible. Uh, usually, uh, I'll do a one pass over uh, and then um, I'll let it dry, usually 24 hours. I like to let it dry, harden real good. Uh, and then uh, I'll go back and um, fill in all the gaps. So what happens with this craft paint when uh, you leave it dry for 24 hours, it kind of condenses and, and uh, it shrinks actually. Uh, so it'll leave gaps some in some areas where the paint doesn't stay. So you'll have to go back and fill those holes in. It doesn't do it by much, but just a little bit. Um, so you just have to go back and, and uh, fill that in. Okay, so we're just going to uh, fast forward this a little. Um, just so uh, we don't have to watch me paint the entire thing black. Um, essentially, uh, you can see here, I'm just getting into every little nook and cranny in, in this uh, piece and trying to cover it all in black uh, craft paint. Uh, then do the uh, very next thing to the top. I'm going to cover that all in black paint as well. All right, so we'll fast forward and get to the uh, next step here. Okay, so usually my next color is my tried and true. Uh, I go with uh, real brown. Uh, by Folk Art again, uh, multi-surface uh, brown craft paint. Uh, and this is the brush I use. Uh, I use like to use a, just like a larger paintbrush. Uh, make sure you have a paper towel and, uh, and uh, you know, I usually put it on a, a plate here. Um, this can get quite messy, so just make sure <laughs> you have a nice clean area to work. Uh, the paper towel I essentially use uh, to... Um, uh, so it, my paint is not so thick on my brush. So I'll dab it in there, kind of pull it out on the on my uh, plate here. So I just get a little bit on the tip of my brush, and uh, get it get lots on there. Uh, and then I'll go into the paper towel here and pull off it so it's not really really thick, but enough to uh, just leave uh, a nice highlight on everything. So then I'll kind of just tap everything on as you can see I'm just kind of rubbing it uh, not really hard but just uh, softly over top 
essentially dry brushing it uh, and uh, trying not to get into, you know, as much of the crevices as, as I can. Uh, as I build up the layers of paint on here, uh, the more raised surfaces are going to be lighter. Um, but uh, we're going to start with this uh, real brown first, uh, just to get, keep in the dark family of colors, uh, but moving into the browns. I like to paint uh, uh, all my pieces with earth tones first. So, of course, there's going to be a lot of stone here, um, but uh, I like to continue uh, and uh, cover everything in earth tones. So I kind of fast forwarded uh, for you guys just so you can kind of see uh, what it looks like after I've completed all the uh, um, the dark brown. Uh, sorry, the real brown. And then we're going to move on to the, uh, the top and do the uh, same thing. Same dry brushing technique. Just repeating and going all uh, over kind of catching some of those raised areas. It's okay if you don't get it in all the crevices because you do want to have a little bit of the black still showing. All right, so we'll uh, move on to the uh, next step here. All right, so the uh, next color I like to use is uh, bark brown. So it's a little bit of a lighter brown, um, but uh, it, uh, it's the next step up, I feel, from uh, real brown. So I'm kind of just building up layers of uh, highlights uh, on this entire piece. Again, staying in the earth tone uh, family, I like to do all these earth tones uh, first. So same technique, just uh, fill in the tip of that brush. I don't usually wash my brush in between. I like to have all the colors on there, so I kind of just mingle everything. And I don't let it dry uh, between uh, dry brushing the different colors. I just go right ahead and put the uh, next color over top of the other. I like the uh, interplay of all them mixed together as I, as I just kind of spread them on. Um, you get some uh, nice effects and, and nice highlights and uh, areas that are darker and lighter and uh, it just gives it a more natural feel. Um, I find uh, uh, if I let them dry in between, uh, you just get a real defined color difference where this way you can, you can uh, kind of blend them and uh, meld them all together um, and uh, you get to a better results. So i uh, just going to go around, uh, get into every spot. Uh, I like to do the inside. As you can see, I'm just flicking downwards on my bricks, kind of highlighting it. Uh, this is the same technique I actually use for uh, my shingles, too, on my buildings and my houses and stuff. Just kind of fling it like that uh, and just highlight some of the edges uh, of, of the entire thing. So I'm just going to move on here. We'll probably uh, just uh, move a little bit ahead to the next uh, step and the next color, uh, just so you guys can see uh, where we're going next. Okay, just before we move on to the next step, I just wanted to uh, uh, give you guys a look of uh, what it looks like after I've done the uh, bark brown. So we have the black, the real brown, and the, the, uh, the bark brown on here right now, all full car paint. Uh, multi-surface craft paint. All right, uh, so the next color uh, we are going to go into is this uh, Pablo. Uh, and it's a kind of like an orangey-brown color. Again, another folk art uh, in the Earth Tone family. And we're going to put it on the plate. And I like to arrange them in kind of the order I put them on. Because uh, sometimes I'll want to go back and, and touch up my paint and go back to the previous colors. Um, but uh, we're going to use the same uh, pull the brush technique. Get a little bit on the tip of your brush there. And then usually the orange, I'll, I'll tap it up pretty good on the paper towel. Because this is a, a color that you can go a little crazy on. Uh, and uh, really uh, make a really badly orange piece. <laughs> so you got to be very conservative, very careful. Make sure you don't have too much orange on your brush. And just really, really, really just, just tap everything. Again, I didn't let anything dry, uh, working everything as it's still wet. That's how I like to work the whole thing. 
Uh, again, just flinging it on there. Uh, probably even being even lighter with the way I tap it on uh, because this color is so bright. Um, yeah, like I said, you can get carried away with uh, too much orange in there. Uh, but if that happens, uh, that's why you gotta keep it wet. Uh, you can go back to some of the other browns that you've already previously put on. Um, and then you can cover up uh, and then kind of go over it again uh, and uh, touch it up. So as you can see, just all those uh, raised areas that we worked on in, on the tutorial videos, those little bricks that we created and uh, um, with the rock tumbling and all those uh, uh, ones we carved out uh, out of dollar store foam board and that jewelry, all those uh, textures that we put on our paying off now uh and uh coming out uh highlighted all right so this is just kind of an overall view of what it looks like uh with uh, the orange on it so the pablo uh pablo on here the uh color earth tone so now we're going to move into uh even even lighter color uh we are going to go into uh it's called a uh, camel and it's uh, another full car paint. Again, these are all full car paints. Uh, and it's uh, really kind of like a khaki color, really, to be honest. And uh, again, still within the same family of earth tone colors. And we're going to be even more conservative uh, with this one. Um, uh, putting it on our brush. Let's get that orange off our brush. Let's uh, wipe it up really good on, on the paper towel. Um, it's okay to have a little bit of orange in there. Uh, but uh, let's just try to get it as clean as we possibly can. And then you get kind of a little bit of an orangey, beigey color coming out there. Uh, and this is where we're going to add another layer of highlights uh, to this entire piece. So we're going to be really, really gentle when we dry brush here. Uh, because again, just like the orange. Uh, see, look at I've kind of messed up the... Uh, <laughs> bit too much orange in there and I've had to go back to the brown so it's good to have all those colors on your plate uh, then you can go back and fix and adjust and, and get the right color you're looking for all right so let's tap our brush out and uh, let's uh, be very gentle on adding it to our piece so really just tapping it very lightly uh, just and I kind of like to get to the edges uh, to highlight the edges of everything kind of pops everything out um, but uh, all those raised areas like I said on all those textures that we put on there are really gonna stand out right now that now we put this uh, this camel color on here um, so you're just gonna go and cover the entire piece uh, and get all those uh, those areas Again, using that same, uh, I'm going to call it the shingle technique, to just pulling it up. Uh, and then you just get the edges um, of that, uh, of, that uh, of the foam there. Um, it really highlights it. So just another note on uh, the earth tone colors. Uh, I find that uh, it really gives a, a realistic feel to the whole piece. Uh, most things in nature uh, have earth tones in them, uh, and everything just kind of gets builded up on top of it. So, of course, we're going to add color here. We're going to add some stone colors to this, this piece, but uh, uh, it's important uh, to put this uh, really uh, earth tones in first. At least I find that I, I, I feel that it's more visually appealing that way. Okay, so now let's, uh, we're going to go with a little uh, bright color. This is a yellow ochre by Folkart. Um, and we are going to use this lovely army painter, uh, dry brushing, uh, dry brush. Um, they, I think they sell them on Amazon. They got, uh, four in a pack, uh, different sizes. This is, uh, probably the medium size one. There's one that's really small, but I think for what we need, uh, medium size, uh, would be great. Um, I do love uh, using this uh, Army Painter brush when I'm doing finer details. So uh, we're going to add a little bit of color in some of the uh, walls here. Uh, and, and this uh, brush will work uh, really well for what we need to do. All right, so similar to the other brush, we're going to pull the paint out. Get a little bit on the tip of our brush. And then we're going to hit that paper towel again and uh, kind of just scoop it out. Not get too much on there, take a little bit off. And then we're gonna highlight some of these areas. So we're gonna go highlight this area around um, around the in the wall here. 
uh, just kind of maybe uh, this we used to be a bright orange wall uh, when this temple was originally constructed. Uh, so we want a remnants of that yellow paint left on the wall here. Uh, usually uh, where you want it to be the lightest is where you start with your brush. So I kind of started right next to the middle there. Uh, and then uh, you just kind of pull it out from there. Just keep reworking it, reworking it. Uh, and you'll get a kind of a glow from the center uh, and duller as it goes out. Now we've already got dark tones in the corner. So uh, it, it should look nice and faded out and uh, give you a nice bright look to the center. Uh, but uh, faded out in the corners uh, a little darker gives it a good shadow effect all right so we're just uh, gonna get all these different sizes with this yellow ochre and just make sure you uh, rub it real good so uh, this brush is excellent for you can just push it down real uh, good here and rub that paint around so you only need a little bit of paint for where you're starting on the brightest and then you can just rub it in there. Uh, just keep working it, reworking it. Um, and you'll get that, uh, as you can see, it's a nice and glow in the center and kind of faded out in, on the sides. All right, so we'll go around to the other side here. We've got one more side to take care of. Just using the same technique, just working it in here. Um, there is a smaller brush in this set, which, you know, I maybe a, I could have used. A, it would have been even smaller. But I find that as the smaller you get with the brush, um, the harder it is uh, to have that nice blended effect. Uh, it's, it's really hard with a smaller brush uh, to get the same blended look on the wall. Um, so that's why I went with uh, the medium size uh, brush opposed to the, uh, uh, the really smallest brush in that set. So I'm going to go back, touching up some areas that I, doesn't seem right to me or needs to be a little bit brighter. Um, again, this whole thing is still wet. Uh, it's just one piece after another. But uh, if anybody knows when you dry brush, things dry fairly quickly. I'm not worried about touching it. My fingerprints are, I know that some people might worry about their fingerprints sticking on it. It doesn't. It dries fine. Uh, and you're good. All right, so let's move on to the top here. Um, and I, you know, I kind of want to have some offsetting colors up here as well. So, uh, you know, you want to break up the colors that are there. You don't want to have it all the same. Um, so there would be a orange, I, I'm sorry, a yellow part of this wall too. So I'm going to do this little rim of the top here. Uh, and maybe they had put some yellow paint on there. Um, of course, we're just going to do, uh, just an impression of it. So, you know remnants of the yellow paints there not a full yellow paint um just to say that that, that used to be uh, yellow at one point or another uh but it's weathered over weathered over time so again using the same techniques uh kind of just uh, i kind of do like a circular motion as a, as you can see more so than the big tall like the flat brush where i just kind of pull it um this little little brush i like to do uh kind of a circular motion Kind of where I want it to be the brightest is where you circle the most, and then you kind of just uh, work it out from there. So I'm just going to work this uh, lid over here so you guys can see the, the top. Just going to show a little bit longer of this uh, technique um, than the other ones, uh, just because it's uh, more repetitive, and, and uh, really this one I, I only do this kind of technique at this portion of it. Um, I might look at touching some more of the bottom up in the same color. Um, just like I said, offsetting, have different things, different colors. Um, just adds more visual appeal to the overall piece uh, than having, um, you know, two colors, three colors. I just want to have a, a very colorful. Now, I kind of going for the Aztec Mayan feel to this piece. So definitely uh, they would have had some colors uh, on there. I know a lot of the current ruins that they've found, of course the color is long gone, but at the time of the game of Blood and Plunder, which I'm making this temple for, um, it's not as far away, uh, you know, maybe 100 years or so, or even less, um, where some of this stuff would have uh, existed. So it would have been in a little better condition, 
than when we found it uh, today in modern time, but uh, it would still would have been weathered, you know, a good hundred years in the jungle. Uh, a lot of weathering would have happened uh, to this, uh, this temple. All right, so I, like I said, I was decided to go to the bottom. I'm going to hit these uh, kind of like a decorative pillars on the front here. Um, just add a nice little yellow, again, offsetting that color just so we don't have it uh, brown everywhere. Uh, of course, I plan on adding the grays in at, uh, here shortly, uh, but uh, I just want to add some more uh, yellow uh, ochre to it. I really like this color. I really like the way it's looking on here, um, really highlighting out some of the details on this uh, piece. So just uh, get around here and uh, get all these edges. The only thing I kind of regret uh, the way I assembled this is I put these on afterwards. I mean, I put them on before, and I probably should have put them after. I figured, like, you know, I would have painted it, then glued them on. It might have been a little bit uh, easier. Uh, it's making it a little more challenging to get my brush in there. But what do you do? Sometimes you make mistakes and you add little extra work for yourself. Um, but, uh, sometimes you get happy mistakes, sometimes you get unfortunate mistakes, but, uh, overall, uh, you know, I'm pretty happy, uh, with, uh, the way it turned out. So, right now I'm just kind of looking at how it looks all together. Um, does it look, uh, coherent? Do I need to add more color somewhere, uh, to kind of blend it all out? Just adding more yellow where I think it needs to be more bright. All right, let's move on to the next stage. So I've decided to go ahead and uh, paint the, the pillars yellow too on the front. Uh, I guess I decided while I was looking at it, uh, I figured I needed a little bit more. So I went back and hit it in some areas again with some more yellow. Also going to hit these matching posts in the back. Uh, give it a little color in the inside too as well. Uh, that'll match the, uh, the pillars on the front of the uh, temple. So I'll just hit those areas as well. Same technique. Uh, just grabbing that, uh, dry brushing that yellow ochre uh, into it. So I decided while looking at it uh, that I would go, um, I think I needed some more color. So I'm going to take my uh, Army Painter brush here and I'm going to hit up uh, that Pablo orange again. Uh, and uh, I think I'm going to hit the, the tiles. I want to hit these tiles that are, uh, are the ledge stones, uh, if you remember from the tutorial video. Uh, if not, uh, you can see which ones I'm painting. I want to add a little uh, orange to uh, this whole piece. So I'm going to hit all these uh, stones on the top here. Uh, yeah, I think I like that better. I'm going to go ahead and put all that orange uh, in all these tiles as well. Again, just another breakup in color. Um, it just adds more visual appeal to it. Um, and again, this temple... Um, would have had some color to it, uh, even with uh, 100 years of fa fading and jungle and rain, and it was, still would have had some remnants of its uh, former colors, uh, and we want to highlight that on there. So I'm going to finish this top up, and then I'm going to move to the bottom. I would like to hit the same thing with the uh, ledge stones on there as well. Just... Uh, Go around the top here make sure it's uh, all covered um, as you can notice I didn't uh, I didn't uh, wash my brush out I didn't dry it didn't do anything I just kind of uh, kept going and again uh, this is all in one continuous painting motion so meaning I just started right from my original dry brush to continue painting I I kind of an impatient painter I like to uh, <laughs> I like to paint everything all at once uh, mainly because most of my painting I would say I've done on canvas 
Uh, and recently I've just got into uh, doing terrain and crafting, which, you know, is my new passion. I absolutely love this uh, technique uh, or this uh, kind of uh, style of art. Um, and uh, But uh, I find myself wanting to paint it all in one thing. But I, I do like the results I get, uh, as I mentioned earlier in the video. Um, all those blending of colors are... are uh, I think uh, really what sets it off and makes it look uh, really realistic. Now, as you can see, there's a few areas where I've gobbed over and uh, I will probably touch them off off camera just so you don't have to watch me do that. Um, but do it while you have all your paint still on the plate. You can go back and hit all those areas, right? All right, so now I'm going to hit those uh, stones, as I mentioned, on the bottom. Kind of same thing I did kind of on the top. I really like how this is going. I really like the colors uh, that are being blended here. Um, and it's giving me the, the results I want. Um, so I'm just going to keep going around here uh, and uh, paint this entire, all the ledge stones. Not as much circular motion here, more of just rubbing it on. Um, but I always tap it, as you noticed, into the paper towel first. You don't want to have just straight paint right from uh, the plate right to... Uh, you'll just get gobs of orange on there. Uh, and you won't be happy with uh, the results of that. So I just keep tapping it into there, into the paper towel. And uh, you'll get uh, just, just the highlights. You want to highlight it. Uh, and again, it's not, it's weathered from uh, being on it for a long period of time. Okay, so now we're going to move on to our grays. Um, so these are some of the colors I like to use. I like to use... Uh, a white, uh, an ivory, all full cart, craft paint, multi-surface again. Uh, and I like to use, uh, this is just gray, full cart paint. And then we move into an army painter. That's a hydra blue, kind of like a teal color. And then some copper. Just to uh, add a little touch to some of the metallics on here. So these are pretty much the last of the colors that we're going to be adding to this piece. Um, so I've already pre put it on here so it's going to start with the grays first. Um, and I've already kind of touched it up. You can see there's a little bit of gray on there already. Uh, and then I'm just going back over it again. Same with the army painter brush. I'm just kind of hitting all these areas. You can see I've already been here. Just to save time on this video, I kind of just, uh, just kind of just showing you what I've done uh, with this gray, and I've kind of gone hit those areas. Again, this is another layer of colors um, and different textures and colors onto this whole piece. Uh, and then, really, the ivory and the uh, white we're going to be using for highlights. Move to uh, putting some gray on the top too as well here. Yep, same technique, just rubbing it on there. And as you notice, uh, you know, it's off camera there, but uh, you can see that I'm hitting that uh, paper towel again. I think I'm going to hit the snake embellishment here with a little, with a little gray too as well. Uh, as you can see, I got a glob of orange there. Well, I'll fix that, like I said, after <laughs> afterwards off camera. Um... That's the thing about painting it all in one one foul swoop. Um, uh, I don't want to bore you with the uh, other details of going back. Of course, you're going to have to go back and touch all this up. Uh, errors happen, and uh, we're just going to clean all that up. But we're just going to touch it all up around here with these uh, grays. Adds a nice contrast between the yellow, the orange, the gray, uh, and the earth tones that are on there. 
And then, of course, we're going to hit it up with some teal blue in some areas, too, just to really make it pop. So I'm just uh, kind of staring at it. I'm going to go to this ivory color now. Uh, I always kind of just pull it back and look. Do I like the way it looks um, as it gets ready for the ivory? So ivory is kind of an in-between white and gray, uh, but it's got a little bit of a yellowy color to it, right? Um, it's not fully white. And really lightly, uh, really uh, touch up those stones. Uh, and those uh, rock tumbling we did uh, in the very first video is going to really pay off dividends here. Uh, really going to be able to highlight those uh, textures on, on those stones um, and really, uh, really make that pop. And of course, after we've done this ivory, we're going to move to the white. And when you do the white, you got to be super careful. <laughs> I guess white, uh, you just want the remnants of white on there just a little bit, just to highlight it. I guess white, uh, again... Uh, same goes for the ivory, really. You, I mean, these colors you just can't go overboard on. Um, I know when I filmed this video, it, it seemed like uh, I did okay with that. Uh, for the most part, uh, I didn't do too many saturation spots uh, that uh, kind of wrecked that I had to fix off camera. Uh, I was pretty good on my first go at, at this. Um, but when you're first doing this technique, uh, that's going to happen. You're, you're just going to oversaturate certain areas. You might have to go back and, and you might have to paint it right from the beginning and you might have to paint it grays and put browns on there again and start all over. Um, in that case, I would definitely let it dry first before you go back and touch it up. Um, not do the technique that we're doing right now where we're just doing it all in one continuous motion of just keep painting while it's wet. Um, uh, if there's a lot of errors, I would just repaint that area, let it completely dry uh, and then go back in with all your colors. So you can see that this is just layers upon layers upon layers. So remember I was talking about at the very beginning with the black, uh, putting that original black coat on, uh, and then hitting it, you know, look at how many different layers of folk art, craft paint, multi-surface paint we've put on top of this thing. Uh, each layer is adding another level of protection on, on, on this. Uh, when this completely dries, it'll be completely hard, uh, and uh, it uh, will last uh, a long time. Um, some of my terrain pieces, uh, you know, again, I said I've only been doing it for a couple of years, uh, but the very first piece I've done, I did similar technique, uh, and it's as good as the day I, I made it. So um, this uh, technique of just multiple layers of craft paint works just fine. It hardens it uh, what, you, what you'll need. Uh, for it now that works for this foam uh, you know there's other kinds of materials uh, for example uh, cardstock on um, shingles and and other materials you may use uh, you might want to go and uh, use that other technique I mentioned before about uh, uh, Mod Podge uh, there's other other uh, artists out there that have uh, excellent videos on how to uh, mix uh, Mod Podge washes and all sorts of things on there um, and that stuff really hardens really hard and uh, it'll protect your shingles and other materials but this thing is made mostly of just foam uh, and this crap paint will just be sufficient uh, for what we need. All right, so uh, I know I'm going off on a tangent here, but uh, just kind of uh, explain uh, a little bit more about why I really like just the multi layers of crap paint. Uh, as you can notice, I, I didn't use a lot of uh, high end uh, of uh, Army Painter paints, even though I love them uh, and my Citadel paints. I kind of save them for the finer details, and, and they're more for miniatures. I find that crap paint's excellent for terrain. Uh, if you're doing large surfaces, uh, you're not going to use small tubes of uh, Army Painter paint. Um, but to add those uh, fine details, like I said, the copper and the uh, and the blue teal colors that I want to add in, uh, yeah, we're going to go with a little more uh, finer paints with the uh, Army Painter. All right, so again, hitting the top, same as I did as the bottom. I'm just hitting that, uh, still using that ivory color. Oh, there, I made a little blob there. I'll have to go back and fix that. <laughs> 
picked it off with a finger. Well, I don't know if that worked too well, but, uh, <laughs> uh, well, you know, you can't be perfect. You're going to make errors. Oh, let's get around here and, uh, finish painting her up. Let's put it on top. Again, just sizing it up, putting it on there, seeing if it's, you know, I'm happy with the way it looks. Um, the right mix of colors. All right, so I feel that we're ready for the white. So again, super careful. I, like, <laughs> I'm showing you specifically, get the paper towel out and go really hard. So I'm going to do that circular motion I did at the... Uh, beginning there and I really as you can see like just the lightest touch is really making uh like a lot of highlights already right so you just want to lightly touch things get some of the edges again show some of those uh textures that we put in with our rocks uh those egg cartons are, are gonna look fantastic with that white highlight on it uh just really gives it that uh, authentic stone look to it uh, tap it in there so in the next part of uh, video uh, we are going to be moving into uh, washes so I decided to kind of split this whole thing up Oop, made another mess uh, into uh, into multiple videos uh, mainly because uh, it was it would be too long to do it all in one continuous video um, this uh, the painting part is probably the longest part um, I, I think to, to the washes, it, it'll be done similarly, uh, where we're doing multiple layers and building up upon building up different colors, um, and, uh, covering our terrain in uh, different washes. Um, and then the final, uh, video will be on, uh, putting all the plant life, all that moss and, and, uh, vines and all those cool, uh, details that really make it look like an aged temple that was left in the jungle. All right, going back to what I'm doing here, just uh, hitting everything with that white. Just well, probably hit that a little hard there. Might have to go back and touch that up. Um, but uh, just rubbing things on. Again, so some of the stuff will be darkened once I go and add washes to it. Um, so it's good to have a few raised white areas, a little lighter areas. Uh, so you have light and dark areas when you hit some different colored washes in there. You know, I hit the greens and, and uh, some browns and, you know, uh, blacks, dark tones, storm tones, those kind of things uh, to uh, give it that really weathered look. But that'll be in the, the next video. All right, so hit the top again with the white. Just moving along and trying to get everything uh, completed. All right, we're just about ready to move on for some color. Okay, I'm gonna add those last details. And I'm gonna to go to that army painter. It's called Hydra Blue or Turquoise. Uh, that's the name of the color uh, made by Army Painter. It gives me a nice uh, teal feel to it. Uh, the Mayans and, and Aztec culture uh, used a lot of teal blue and oranges, yellows in, in there their uh painting wall paintings designs art um so i kind of want to carry those kind of colors over in this temple you know it might necessarily not be either one of those cultures i just kind of wanted to have that feel to it that it could be one of those cultures uh temples um so it's kind of got a mixture of both into it um but i think it'll be uh, perfect for uh my blood and plunder game um, I can't wait to uh, uh, try this out in its first. Uh, I'm, I'm going to use it in our next, uh, my next battle report uh, using this uh, temple. Should be uh, should be a, a fun piece to use. I was thinking about using uh, doing the uh, raid scenario and have the treasure in there. I have this image in my mind of. Uh, Pirates using this uh, this temple as maybe their the place where they're hiding their their treasure. 
<clears throat> and uh, their booty in here, um, deep in the jungle, they have a temple that they hide their treasure in. Uh, and then the uh, opposing force uh, finds them in the jungle, and we have a nice little battle ensuing. So uh, it's, it's funny when I'm making this stuff, I, I, I you know I'm coming up with scenarios in my head, um, which is crazy. Uh, but I just want to see how it would look, uh, uh, you know, on the battlefield. Now, remember, uh, this piece here, uh, is, uh, actually part of a greater piece. So eventually it's going to be part of, uh, of the arena. <clears throat> I don't remember I was talking about it being a part of the arena, um, so just kind of showing you, uh, everything where I've colored it, uh, blue and added those highlighted colors. Um, now we're moving into, uh, copper. So, uh, Army Painter has great metallics, uh, and they really take well to the washes they have. Uh, I find that, uh, all the Army Painter brand products work well uh, with each other. I find some of the other washes and other brands sometimes don't work too well on, on, on their own paints, <laughs> which doesn't make any sense to me, but uh, that's the only thing I find. I mean, some people swear by them, and you know what? If you can get whatever effect you can with any paint, all the power to everybody. Um, every paint is good. You can make the, the lowest quality paint uh, really pop if you need to. Um, uh, there's lots of goods, but there's definitely some other brands that I haven't tried out there, and I'll be really interested in in trying. I'm really kind of a, uh, again, you're uh, a couple of years in doing this. Um, I'm not uh, foreign to painting. I've been doing that, uh, you know, thirty, forty years, but uh, but as far as doing um, crafting and miniatures and stuff like that, it, this is all kind of new. So definitely uh, very helpful. A lot of pages out there help me uh, find some techniques on how to paint. And I'm kind of comfortable with uh, kind of uh, my formula for doing things. I've gotten uh, excellent results with it. I feel I've gotten excellent results. Uh, so I'm just going to continue uh, down that path and uh, explore it. But uh, I will certainly try any new products. Uh, and I've discovered things that end up being fantastic and better than stuff I've used. So I never uh, discount anything. Anything's uh, good. So uh, here I'm just kind of uh, hitting up some of those, uh, you know, those little embellishments on the walls with a bit of copper. Of course, I'm going to cover it with washes, but uh, you just wanted to have that metallic feel. Everything's kind of at its bright phase right now because we're just we're painting it. Uh, but once we hit the washes on here, we'll get uh, really an aged look to it. But I, I want to hit all these uh, little costume jewelry that I've glued on, but it's made some interesting, um, you know, uh, designs on, on in the foam here. It also breaks it up, so uh, you got some different, again, different, more different textures and designs uh, on the piece. So I'm going to hit all this, uh, all these copper uh, pieces on here. So just kind of going back a little bit about uh, talking about the whole piece as a whole. Uh, in in the arena setting, this would have been at the end of the arena where the king or emperor would have sat in uh, kind of to, uh, I would call it kind of like box seats of the past, <laughs> uh, to watch the actual event that's going on in front of them. Um, so I am going to do a series of videos of constructing the actual arena part of it. Um, so this part will actually be a, a piece of that um but uh this will be good uh freestanding on its own and it'll be uh good to be used as a temple as well which i plan on doing uh this week in, in my battle report all right so i've kind of got i think everything i wanted to do here let's just take one more last look at it everything looks good and i think we're done with the paint Thanks for watching everyone, and I will see you in the next video uh, where we do the wash tutorial. See you then guys!